Welcome to Swiss Echoes episode 12. Today I'm joined by Remo Blaser, Vice President of Silent Gaming and CSGO and Valorant Caster. So Silent Gaming is an org that everyone in Switzerland knows, like it's one of the biggest orgs, but how did it become one of the biggest orgs and what made you unique or different? Oh, that's a good question actually, uh, to start it off already. Um, I feel like the reasoning behind this is because uh, the people have been active in the community for like a very, very long time. Uh, they've been here since more or less the start or the beginning of Swiss esports. They have been players. They have been known by mostly everyone. And they have just put something together. We've had a big community back then. Uh, so people just knew us. And then going out of this one, it's it's a little bit easier, obviously, because you already have a name. You know the people behind it. And this the people or the teams, players, etc., they also have some kind of trust in you from the get-go, so they, they do know you don't want to screw them over. And I think those are like the biggest reasons why we've had such a success. Uh, additionally, we've had a management and staff that has been very, very actively working on it, very, very passionate. And all those reasons, just like if you put them together, you have a very good foundation for, a, for really anything in not only a Swiss esports organization, would have probably also worked out doing something else. So, yeah, it's just the people, the passion, that's that's the basics. And what was your part in all of that? Uh, my part is coming in after Silent Gaming has existed for some years and uh, just bring some fresh air into it. Uh, the moment I joined, Silent Gaming didn't really have a focus of going semi-pro or pro. And with me, we started talking about it. And uh, during the year I joined, which was 2000, 2016, I think, not sure, uh, we decided to just like go pro, so to speak, uh, which meant we do go uh, towards teams. We try to get them under contract and play for us. We try to get the best teams in Switzerland. And my role really just has been to uh, to to stay there, to give input, uh, to to be some kind of some, some kind of guy you can ask anything. Uh, also the whole technical part around silent gaming, a little bit of marketing here and there. So I was really just like someone you could really use for for anything related to, to silent gaming or esports, really. Okay, so I would like to talk about 2019 of silent gaming because. You had a lot of second place finishes twice at the Swisscom Hero League. Uh, no, th uh, three times even. Yeah. And um, yeah, could you quickly go through 2019? Yeah, 2000, not 2019 uh, was, was a blast, really. Uh, I know a lot of people think, well, it's only a second place, but the second place is actually really good for an organization. Uh, you're on stage, you're in the finals, the people see you, the sponsors see you. All the other companies see you, the media see you. So l really reaching the final is already more than half of, of the job. And also, if you look at League of Legends, for example, we have to play against Postfinal Helix two times. Uh, the first finals, the second finals. That's hard. Um, beating post Postfinals was, was really impossible for, for any team in Switzerland, simply because they just had the best players. They were able to play full time, and if you were just like doing esports or League of Legends as a hobby, it's it's really not possible to just like win win uh, against them. And secondly, in CS:GO, uh, we've had a team consisting of five players. That CS:GO is, is different compared to League of Legends. There's less screaming together, less practicing together, but more just assemble a team play in a league, try to win it, and that's it. So uh, the team we had also was just consisting of five people that didn't really practice all that much together. And going up against Red Instinct, I think the big problem was uh, Red Instinct just being way more experienced to play on such stages, in such games, etc. And I think that was the reason Red Instinct won it in the end. But as I said, uh, we've been second place, we've been in the finals, which is which is great, really. So, like you said, second places are very good. I think yes. other Swiss orgs would dream of getting three times uh, second place in the System yeah. Hero League. But why did all these second place rosters leave Silent Gaming, even though it's such a 
big org. So what happened there? Well, they all basically disbanded as teams. Um, our first League of Legends team that reached the finals didn't really disband, but they did join my insanity later on. Uh, which the reasoning behind that is just that my insanity was able to to offer them better conditions. Uh, our CS:GO team they more or less disbanded after the finals, uh, and the same goes for our new league, new League of Le new old League of Legends team, so to speak. Uh, they disbanded as well. Also, a little bit of reasoning behind that probably was that a lot of Swiss players tried to assemble like a very good team uh, for the Riot League. I'm not sure what it's called anymore. Prime League. Uh, yeah, the Prime League, exactly. So, um, yeah, everyone was kind of looking around for new team members to maybe assemble like a very strong team to make it to Prime League. And so they disbanded as well. And really, that was the reason why those teams left us in the end. But I guess you you tried your best to try to hold them together, right? And you you obviously do try. We've also talked with the CS:GO team, for example, after the finals. Uh, we we even offered some players that uh, well, if you if you try to assemble a new team, you can always speak to us. But uh, in in that case, CS:GO, most of the players they. They'd rather be free agents or just roaming around in mixed teams than being bound to an organization or a company. And regarding League of Legends, that kind of went down the road since uh, we don't really have Swiss leagues anymore. We do have SCSL, kind of. We have Swisscom Hero League, kind of. But it's not really that League of Legends league we've had once due to that franchising part of Riot where you're not really allowed to run leagues anymore. And I think that really hurt the League of Legends part. And yeah, we try to hold them together, but in the end, if if someone wants to try out a different path, you gotta let them go. Because if you just like try to convince them to stay just for the sake of it, it won't work out either. So you had good placings, but good placings cost. So you said it in the silent gaming stream, but what 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 were the expenses of 2019 for Silent? It's a big sum, right? Of it's money. it's a pretty big sum. I think we said around 40k. Yeah. Um, which is which is kind of true. Uh, but and and a lot of people were like, wow, 40k, that's so much. But actually, if you just break it down, it's it's not really that much if you just offer your teams the basic expenses paid paid. So let's take an example. Uh, we have Switzerland. You have a team consisting of five people. Uh, those five people need to pay an entrance fee around, one, let's say, 100 bucks. So that's already 500 bucks. And then you pay them an Airbnb or a hotel or whatever. That's maybe another, uh, let's, what, what, what should we say, 50 bucks per person. That's another 250 bucks. Uh, you're already on 750. And that's one event. And then let's just round it up for the sake of it with like uh, traveling fees, food and stuff like that. So let's say 1K for one team at Switzerland. Silent Gaming at our prime times, we had like six teams. So if you want to send every team to Switzerland, you pay around 6K. And that's, first of all, it's one event. And secondly, stuff like shirts, jackets, hoodies, all that stuff isn't even included. So. Yeah, it really sums up, and it, it was seriously us just like paying our players the basic expenses they have during events, and not really like paying them out any salaries or stuff like that. Uh, that wasn't even part of it. So, yeah, it's 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 quite an expensive hobby. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Yes. So a lot of that money came from Quickline, I would say your sponsor. It's but Quickline unfortunately left you. Could you explain why they left you and what the problems were in the partnership with them? Well, the partnership started off actually really, really well uh, because they've been very open. They've been very interested in esports. Um, they also came up with, with certain ideas, which we tried to like work out in the end. And we've already always wanted a partner that's not just here to give us money, but also to just do something with them. For example, Quickline has some shops around Solothurn and Bern. And one of our ideas was the classic idea to just send some players there or even send people from the management there 
and kids as well as their parents or people just interested in esports could come up, uh, play with our pros. Parents could could speak with us about uh, about esports and gaming regarding their kids because, like most of the parents, they just don't know what their kids actually are doing. And uh, we've had other ideas with with regular sports people and stuff like that, but the, the management or the marketing section in Quickline changed quite often. And we felt that silent gaming or esports in general wasn't really on the top priority for Quickline. So our our ideas and stuff like that, we submitted them and we never, we got a feedback, they thought it's cool, but we never actually came to the point of doing something which was kind of sad and which obviously does not strengthen your partnership. So at some point, Quickline changed the marketing section again and the new people just didn't see any future in esports anymore. And that's really the reason why we got dropped there, uh, which is basic management decisions. And yeah, maybe we should have been a little bit more more picky and, and just stressed them out each day a new mail. Hey, let's finally do something, maybe. But uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think we've made a mistake there uh, to to lose them. And I think it's a kind of unlucky or unfortunate story yes. that the management changed all the time. But uh, selling gaming is one of the biggest Swiss orgs. I thought it was kind of weird that it that you didn't find a new sponsor. So what was the problem in finding a new sponsor? Well, the big problems with finding sponsors is not really like setting up something together and present it to someone. The big problem is to find that someone. So we've had like a beautiful sponsoring deck with all our numbers in it, with explanations on what silent is, what our ideas are, etc. And we've sent that around as well. But today, if you want to really be into companies and if you want to get sponsors, uh, you need to be active on the market every time, which means you need to meet people, you need to be in business forums, you need to, you just need to travel around, talk with people, and and a lot of that is, is about socializing, with marketing people, etc., which takes a lot of time actually, and also you need to kind of be a sales guy to do that, to just like be at the business forum and just go up to someone and talk about your ideas and about silent gaming, so. And we never really had the right person to do that ever since uh, Jonas back then left. And I think that was the main reason um, of us just not finding a new sponsor. And also we've been in talks with some companies, but uh, when it really came down to set up a deal and, and talk about money, so to speak, uh, they they quickly turned us down. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it was it was about what we could bring them, but more about how we get in contact with the people. Because writing in sponsoring deck or an email to a info at address is, is never really going to work out if you want to talk about 10, 20, 30k of Swiss francs. So I think that was mainly the reason, yeah. So in the Silent Gaming stream, you said that your players, not all of them, but pl the players didn't want to do content with you. So yes. is that something common in Switzerland? And why do you think that is? I'm not sure if it's common. I'm not sure if other teams had, have had the same problem. I've heard of some organizations that really said, yeah, we have the problem as well. So I think after the, after my... my, uh, my quotes during the stream i had a lot of people responding me on twitter etc and i thought for a second about it and i think a lot of players do not understand how the esports business model actually works especially young players they come in they see oh it's esports oh it's a lot of money involved so i can just play be cool and then it's going to work out but that's not the case that's the good part but the other part is you really need to be of value how you do that is, is totally on your side, but you need to bring value somehow. Uh, either you're like an influencer, you're very funny, very entertaining, something like that, or you're just like the best in your game. And 
a lot of players, when it comes down to playing, they've been in, they want to play, they want to be the best, that's fine. But when it comes down to creating a video, creating an interview and stuff like that, they've always been kind of hesitant to actually do that, uh, which really is a shame because a lot of players also have great personalities. And that really was the reason why we also said it's, it's not a green... It's it's not a healthy environment because we do a player pay our players, but uh, they just don't want to do anything more than playing, and that's not gonna help us out in the end. So, do you have any idea on how to fix this? Like writing it in the contract that it is required of the players that you have to do content, or you can. That's probably up. something, uh, but the problem here is a little bit that contracts in esports in Switzerland they don't really work out uh, mm -hmm. if you were to go to a to a to a to a lawyer they would probably say you know that's that's that won't work uh, the other hand is to just raise the knowledge of the players just let really let them know what they have to do in order for them as well to grow because it's not only about the organizations but the players will grow as well because if they do content with their organizations obviously uh, their their reach gets higher as well. More people do know them, and it's really about both parties. Both parties will profit from that. And I think my insanity does something pretty well because they do invite their players to to some kind of boot camps where they also explain them about about what they should eat, about sports in general, exercising, and also about social media and how they should present themselves on social media and. I think that would be the best part if organizations would just do some kind of workshop with their players, just explaining them, being open about, hey, what are, what are our problems? What are your problems? The problems are the same. We do not have enough, enough reach, so let's profit from each other and do something together and really just raise, raise that experience and knowledge within the player bases. So you said that the players don't give a lot to the orcs apart from yeah, playing, but maybe then not even winning. But in the stream, you had this famous rant where you said that Swiss players are overpaid. I think yes. it's a great rant uh, and I think the Swiss community loved it. So could you yes. quickly reiterate why they are overpaid? Well, the thing is, in, in Switzerland, Swiss esports is actually so small compared to esports in in our neighbor countries like France or Germany, where it's like getting really big. But still, Swiss players kind of expect a lot of money. They expect a budget. They expect travel expenses to be paid. And if you look at it, they expect you to pay a, for an event LAN, which has around... 400-ish people. There's no live stream. There's no stage. There's no people except all the people which already know you as as an organization. Then they expect you to pay everything, and you're just like, yeah, but that's like there's no exposure we're gaining from it. And the reasoning why this is happening is because everyone started to just pay it. And if if everyone just starts to pay these expenses, even though they're not gaining any profit out of it, um, you you really have to do it as well, because otherwise you won't find any teams. And thus, obviously, the prices get higher and higher and higher because you try to be better than your opponent, right? And the prices just raise, 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 raise. But organizations, they just stay here. They They have no chance to get up as well. So that's... That's the real problem. And looking at that, players are really overpriced also because they're, they're, not, they're not willing to do contents. They're not willing to go the extra mile to just help out the organization as well. And I think it's, it's getting even bigger of a problem if those prices just stay high and the organizations won't really make progress in, in that regard. But what do you think we can do against the against these high expectations of the players like the, you, you, we can't tell the orcs they shouldn't pay as much or well they yeah obviously I think. <laughs> yeah yeah obviously but uh, that's kind of goes into the same uh thing as we talked about before organizations need to educate their players in those regards uh, you also you need to stay open you need to stay true 
to to what you actually can do. Otherwise, you might end up also in a situation where you do offer a team, let's say, 10k half a year, but you can't pay it yet. Maybe you're thinking, well, okay, we have half a year time to get that money, but if it's not happening, then you just raise expectations as well. And what's what's happening if a team that has been promised 10k, even though they didn't get it, but they have been promised 10k for half a year, well, they will go out and search for someone that's paying them 12k half a year. Because like it's it's like a job, right? Uh, if Whenever you leave a job, you try to get a new job and, and get a higher, higher paycheck. So it's really about just like educating the players, show them that there's not that much money actually in organizations to 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 pay them out and maybe those expectations will go a little bit lower uh, i gotta say though i was pretty surprised about that statement because i only got good reactions out of it actually even from the players so a lot of players even said well yeah we're overpaid but so yes it's kind of hard and i feel like players should if they want to get paid take it serious do contents do do the stuff around just playing and then I won't, I won't be bothered and not, I won't say that again. So there are some silent gaming rosters which are free agents now. So do you want to advertise any of them and tell us why they should be picked up? Well, really just anyone. Uh, I'm, I've been very, very happy when Kepler uh, wrote me that he's going to be joining my insanity because I think it's a great opportunity for him. And he's a brilliant guy, and I really like the fact he's he's able to join a new organization, join a good organization especially, and just go on with his career in Smash. Then we have Deep Freeze. Uh, Deep Freeze also already found a new team. I'm not sure if it's announced yet. I don't think so. But I can only recommend him as well. Uh, really, all the people we've had at the end have been great people. And... Uh, the last one from the Silent Gaming Smash team was Waves, who's not really playing that much anymore currently. Uh, he decided to stay with Silent for now, but uh, obviously if any organizations are interested in him, I can highly recommend him as well. He's been someone that that really brings value to your organization by also organizing, organizing Smash tournaments. I'm thinking about uh, Smile and Waves where Silent Gaming was basically able to run a Smash tournament together with him, or thanks to him, actually. And we were able to just brand it. And yeah, he's, he's, he's a great guy. He brings a lot of value. And uh, the other team is the League of Legends team, which uh, also already has found an organization. Uh, I think the reasoning why they're a little bit special is they're very passionate about the game. They've been... The core has been together for several years, actually, now. And you, you've you been able to watch their progress, really. They've started in, in very low divisions, but uh, each year they grow a little bit. Each season they grow a little bit. And last year during the Swisscom Hero League, they managed to get into the semifinals, which is, which is awesome to see, actually. So, yeah. I love, I still love all of the teams, so... Yeah, I hope I hope their new homes are good. I wish them the best. So, if you could give one piece of advice to the Swiss Sorks or to all Swiss Sorks, what would it be? Stay true to your original values. So, if you've been a community and you go pro, stay true to your community as well. Don't forget them. Don't just focus on the big money, the big cash, but actually focus on doing something that that's fun to you if it's not fun anymore and if you're only doing it for the business it's the wrong path so stay true to your values as long as it's a lot of fun continue doing it if it stops being fun then you may want to rethink what you're doing so that's really an advice for life not only swiss organizations <laughs> so now I wanted to ask you, what, what about your path, about the path of Silent Gaming? Because during the Silent Gaming stream, you said you had no idea, literally no idea what you would do. So do you have an idea now and can you leak something maybe? Uh, no, because really there's not nothing, nothing really. Uh, we've, 
we're talking about this and that and, and about academies maybe and stuff like that but or doing more content wise stuff for swiss esports but nothing has really got picked up our attention yet uh, where we're at the point that we're th we're saying yeah we're working on something or on an idea more closely to to get out something um so yeah we're just we're just taking our time we've we've thinking about all the possibilities we've also been thinking about uh, maybe just like something like return with only one team and really give our support into that team and all that stuff so but it, those are just like rumors within our organization and within our people and nothing is, is concrete as of yet so that sounds exciting and is there now we are at the end i would say is there anything right. you want to say at the end uh, yeah, uh, first of all, thanks to you for taking your time. I think I we wanted to do it a little bit earlier, <laughs> yeah. uh, but finally it's happened. And also thanks to everyone behind Ganked, I think, or or your, it's your project, right? Yeah. It's not for that's Ganked, my, I'm my. sorry. No I'm problem. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I've seen it on YouTube like a month ago and I love it. And I think that's really something Swiss Esports is lacking, uh, content production not only about like the big topic but also a little bit in into detail and that's exactly what you're doing so keep it up also keep it up with your with your stuff at ganked and uh secondly just uh, thanks to everyone always supporting us supporting me and uh we will we will definitely see you again okay so thank you very much for the kind words thank and you. for being here and to the viewers, go and support Remo during his cast, follow his Twitter, and stay tuned for Silent Gaming updates because it's not the end of Silent Gaming and you heard nope. him, they have some cool ideas. <laughs> and if you want to watch more great Swiss esports content, don't want to miss out on the newest episodes of Swiss Echoes or some cool stuff I will be doing soon, then follow my YouTube, uh, yeah. subscribe to my YouTube channel, but follow my Twitter where my name is also Chamel Esports and yeah. Thank you, everyone. If you, if, you, if you don't subscribe and follow, I will call you out on the next Silent Gaming stream. Oh, shit. Uh, new so be great careful. Rant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, that, that's good. Thank you, Remo. Uh, thank, thank you, you as to well. everyone who watched the video. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.